Say it a little bit louder. There you go. God bless you. I'm glad that you're with us today. May the Lord bless you. And for all those that served in the war and all those that have relatives that passed away, we want to thank all those that gave their life that we could have freedom today. And I want to remind you where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And thank God for Jesus Christ who laid his life down for us that you and I could have eternal life. And there's only one name that that can be through, and his name is Jesus. There is. It's not Hare Krishna. It's not Buddha. It's not Muhammad. Come on. Come on. Not Billy Graham. Not Brian Royer. Nobody. Only one name. Jesus Christ. Can we get an amen? How many love Jesus? Say amen. Well, if you got your, if you got your Bibles with you, I want you to turn to John chapter 16. And I named this Updated. How many know I have a phone that it lets me know when it needs to be updated, okay? How many know that our walk in God needs to be updated? Can I get an amen? How many know that sometimes when we go through stuff, aren't you glad that the Word of God is alive forevermore in your life that can get you through any? And while you turn there, I'm going to open up. I got a scripture before I came today, and uh, I want to share it with you. It's in Psalm 92. You don't have to turn there. You can write it down if you want. In Psalms 92, verse 10, it says, um, But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. How many know we need some fresh oil? Can I get an amen? Why don't we pray that right now? Heavenly Father, we, we right now ask for fresh oil from heaven, Father God. We ask for a fresh fire to burn through our churches in the name of Jesus. Lord, bring miracles at the altar again, Father God. Let us see salvations at the altar. Let us not worry about if we offend anybody. Let us worry if we offend You, O Lord. And Father God, I thank You for salvations that are coming all across America. Healings and miracles. You said in the last days... I would pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And David said in Psalm 92, I need some fresh oil in the name of Jesus. How many need some fresh oil? Let's ask God. We believe for that right now, Lord. In Jesus' name, give Him praise in the house. Come on. Turn to your neighbor one more time and say, shake it up today. John chapter 16, verses 7 through 14, it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. How many know when Jesus said He tells you the truth, it's probably true? Huh? Come on. Nevertheless. Why is the word nevertheless? I don't care what you see and what you think. Nevertheless, He says, I'm going to tell you the truth. No matter what you're going through, alright? It is to our advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. Who is the Helper? The Holy Spirit. Everybody say Holy Spirit. Next week is Pentecost Sunday. We've been building to this. I got up Tuesday and God began to give me this message. Now watch this. He said, but if I depart, I will send Him to you. And when He comes, He will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment and of sin because they do not believe in Me. Of righteousness because I go to the Father and you see Me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when He, talking about the Spirit of truth has come, He will guide you into all truth, for He will not speak of His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will tell you things to come. He will glorify Me, for He will take of what is Mine and declare it to you. How many know the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament came upon men, but in the New Testament, He lives in men? Help me out, somebody. Come on now. We don't have church today. Can I tell you here, everybody, for first time guest Frank, but Frank knows me, okay? I am a Pentecostal preacher. I believe in the Spirit of the Lord. I believe in the blood of Jesus Christ still washes sins away. I still believe in that. I still believe when you're hurting, He can feel, heal your broken heart. I still believe in that. I still believe the only way to save is through the cross of Jesus Christ. He died and paid the ultimate sacrifice so you and I don't have to. So why do we take Him so lightly? Listen, if you didn't see what happened Tuesday, wake up. Evil's in the world. But greater is He that is in me than He that's in the world. Can I preach here today? Go ahead. Come on. we got to go back to that. 
Listen, how many remember the day where sometimes you'd walk in the service and you could already feel the anointing? Anybody remember those days? Come on. Lord, let it happen every time we come here. I don't want to just walk in. I don't want to just have a message. I don't want to just have people show up. I don't want to just play some songs, receive tithes, everybody go home, and don't see you till next week. We want to make sure that you get touched by the presence of the Holy Spirit. And when you get up in the morning, His glory is shining through you. The update in God gives us, He's going to give us some wisdom, and He's going to give us some peace through all this stuff that we're going through. Like I said, I'm a Pentecostal preacher. This is a Pentecostal church. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Look at Luke chapter 12, verse 11. Now, when they bring you to the synagogues and the magistrates and the authorities, don't worry about how or what you should answer or what you should say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. See, the Holy Spirit will give you wisdom when you need it. Well, I'm not really that qualified. Stop it. If you're born again, you're qualified to tell somebody about Jesus. And, well, I don't know the Word too much. Uh, Well, you know what? Start reading it. Start studying it. Start learning it. And guess what? When you're at a Burger King, you all know the story, you'll be able to talk to somebody and lead them to Jesus Christ. When you're at work, all of a sudden, something you're talking to somebody, and before you know it, the Spirit of God tells you to pray for them. God will give you those words. He will give you the wisdom. He'll give you the peace. Because He no longer just comes upon you, but He flows out of you. Come on. Jesus said, you'll have rivers of living water. But you know what we have a lot from the pulpit? Vomit coming out. Come on, help me out. Jesus said, listen. He said it right in His Word. You're either hot or you're cold. But if you're lukewarm, He's going to spit you out of it. We need to wake up. Some people say, okay, I would be the most underqualified for what I do. Because when I graduated, all I could play was guitar, barely graduated. Who would have thought? And I'm not bragging, I'm testifying. You understand what I mean by that? I'm going to testify. Who would have thought that this long red hair just got braces off, met this young girl, Paula. She graduated. She's working at a, a living facility, okay, in the dietary, making lettuce and sandwiches and stuff. For those that would come in, who would have thought that one day he'd help start three churches, help plant church in China, India, come on somebody, Tennessee, and then be able to preach and lead a church and start one in an inner city here that helps support 60 missionaries. I'm the most, I'm not just saying, I would be the most unqualified. Come on. So God doesn't look at what you look like how much education you may have, come on, what you may know about the Bible, if you have faith in God and stand for Him, He will know who does that and He will, He said many are called but only few chose. He will pick on you. Come on, somebody. And let me tell you, if He would have told me, Frank, what I'd have to go through and give up, I probably would have said, oh no! But through all of that, listen, we gave up a lot of stuff. No uh, Wednesday night soccer practice. You going to church. We did. Because we believed in putting the holy God first because one day I won't be here. I want to I walk in. Do you want to walk in? Don't you want to walk in and say, well done now, good and faithful sir, but I don't preach. You set up chairs. He told you to do it. Thank God. You tear it down. Thank God. You got a job. Thank God for what you do. We got some people, I'm going to brag on you, holding a cross on the street saying good morning to everybody on a weekend. Thank God that some people do what they do. Can I get an amen? He promises. Can I, can I prove something to everybody? The Bible says he, he called uneducated men that turned the world upside down. That's all I can dance. That's my new upside down dance. Go ahead. Upside down. We said the oh, quote. There you go. <laughs> Stop that. Anyway, she's going to be a bit. 
So quit saying you're unqualified. The hour is ticking, my friend. But when you feel unqualified, Jesus just told you in Luke chapter 12, the Holy Spirit will teach you what you need in that very hour. So what do I believe? I believe the Holy Spirit will give you wisdom, power, and extraordinary power. I don't know how to build, but guess what? We built churches. I don't know how to build. I don't even know how to do anything. Why would God say, go plant? I, I'm not a farmer. I don't know anything, but God did that. Took me in, down to Cape Coral. They had nobody. They had no budget. They hired me. I didn't know they had no budget after they hired me. I moved my family down there. They have a board meeting. I got to go to the board meeting. They said, "How are you going to raise the money?" I said, "Money for what? We don't have any budget for you." I said, "You know." I said, "Uh oh." I did. I, when I went home, I told what Paula. I said, I "Told my wife." I said, "They got no money for the youth. Where are we supposed to get it? We're supposed to figure it out." You know what? What happened? We said, you know what? We'll just build the leadership. God will bring it. We don't have to worry. God called us here. God's the one to supply it. When you try to do it all on your own, it sometimes doesn't work that well. But when you say, okay, God, I'll show up. I'll do the best I can. But I want you to work all through it. Guess what? God does it. God will show us. When we planted it, well, Tammy and I, we were just talking about it. This isn't even part of the mess. We were just talking about before we got in here. This, this beautiful facility that we get to meet in. Watch this. <laughs> We are two and a half months out, and we have, no, three months out, 90 days, we have no building. We don't know where we're going to meet. Where are we going to meet? I don't know. I have no idea. If we have to meet in, in, in our clubhouse, well, I guess we'll meet there. I don't know if they'll rent it to us. Uh, how are we going to pay for it? I don't know. We'll just do the best we can. We had some churches donate. So when we started, I think we had $3,000. But how many know $3,000 to start a church? Your PA can go in that when you walk in the door, all right? But you know what? Okay, we did this before. We'll do it again. But this time I'm not 37. I was 57. But that didn't matter to God. Stop complaining. Stop complaining. He, he called you. When he called you, you do what he tells you to do. It doesn't matter if you're 95. Okay? And all of a sudden, a guy shows up. <laughs> we have our first service. And the guy showed up second service. Paid 11 months of the rent. At twelve hundred and fifty a month, paid every month. Boom, boom. No, I'm gonna pay. I'm gonna pay, Pastor. I'm gonna pay. 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 I'll pay. Go to the mailbox. There it is. Boom. All of a sudden, went to the mailbox and just received five thousand dollars. Remember, I called. He said, "I got a check. There's a check in there for five. Then all of a sudden, boom. There's a check in there for seventeen thousand from a lady. You know what? You you know they may not go to where you're at in your ministry or what you do, but the Bible says, listen. Given it shall be given to you, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Men shall give unto your book. There are people sometimes somewhere else that may walk up to you that just met you and did not happen. They just went up and sang a song and they didn't know. Somebody comes up and hands them a check for their ministry, which they were on the verge of saying, should we go back to what we're doing? And God blessed them. Can I tell them? The number? Five thousand dollars, and she what? She said, "I drove two hours seeing they were going to donate seven hundred dollars." She said, "Fine." Guy in the audience said, "Hey, listen, the Lord moved upon uh, my wife and I, and we want to help your ministry." She said, "We didn't even ask anything." And all of a sudden, he says, "Here," and she goes, "Well, thank you." And they're driving home, and they open up. He thinks it's five hundred. Praise the Lord. She said, "No, look at it again. Five thousand. Did that not revolutionize you? Saying, "Thank you, the Lord. Thank God. Listen, God will bring you what you need when you need it." I'm a Pentecostal preacher. I believe in all the gifts of the Spirit. I believe in the fruit of the Spirit flowing from the believers. At my 10-year high school reunion, a lady came up to my wife and said, and I showed her my name tag. She didn't even recognize me. She goes, what do you do now, Brian? I said, I'm a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Those are the exact words I said. She said, no way. Is this your wife? And I'll never forget. Move out of the way. Let me tell you about your husband. I said, oh, so... She shared what I did in high school, told her all that. Hey, listen, I don't live there no more. Come on, somebody say praise the Lord if you don't live there no more. Everything we have is because of God. Now, there are some things that I could have done in the natural, but the Spirit of God said no 
How many know the Spirit of God will tell you no because He doesn't want that prayer that you're asking for because He knows it ain't right for you at that time? Uh-oh, come on. That's, that's a different Pentecostal preaching, okay? I'll give you case in point. When we got the building over there, the old covenant life, we got it. The guy that sold us the building lied on encumbrances against the building. No, there's none. I was in there four days. City of Bradenton shows up with one of their people. Uh, are you the pastor? I always said, I'm one of the pastors. Because <laughs> I'm one of them, you know, because we had three. I'm one of them. She said, well, we want to let you know that your, your north parking lot is becoming all shell and broken and it needs to be fixed. It's the order by the city that when you have a facility, you have to have an ash, asphalt, uh, asphalt uh, service. I said, really? I said, well, I just bought it four days ago. She said, we know. We know everything at the city when a building sells or something. And she said, but it's sad. The former pastor's known for two years, and we kept sending fines over and over and over, and he, he wouldn't do anything. wouldn't even show up to the meetings. So I called the attorney, and the attorney said, that's a violation of the law. You, you can bring him back. We'll let him know. He'll have, first of all, get an estimate of the, of the, the asphalt. Okay? So I did. It was 31, I believe it was 30 or 31,000. I don't remember. It was 31, I think. And he said, okay, we're going to write him a letter. We're going to let him know that he has to re- refund $31,000 that he lied. And if you want, you can go more than that. Okay? Didn't do any of that. I got on the phone. I got ready to call. And the Holy Spirit says, don't do anything. So I tell the board, well, Pastor, we, we only got 50000 to remodel this place. If we do $31,000, we are not. it's all going to look like this. I said, God's going to do something. Six weeks later, six weeks later, a uh, check came in for 76000 Okay, praise the Lord. And because God worked through another person and through a situation, watch this. The carpet got done. The p- building got painted. The asphalt got done. God knows what He's doing when he wants to do it. Can we get an amen? And God can move pieces around and use whatever he wants to do it. And you know what? I didn't do anything, didn't say anything. Six weeks, let it go. We forgot about it. And God blessed. And we've learned that God will supply your need when you need it. Can I get an amen? He may not always do it the way we like, but sometimes he does it different ways. I can't understand all that he does. I just know that I trust him. Can we get an amen? amen? God was teaching. He's always teaching us to guide, to, to, to listen to Him and let Him guide us. Not to be smart like you, but I'm not smart enough on my own. I don't know. Some of y'all know me. I, I don't know how to do certain things. I just know that I go do what He tells me to do. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, you can do all things through Christ. Amen. Good place to say praise the Lord. When the power of the Holy Spirit's at work in you, He'll give you insight and wisdom to God, all right? And you're not unqualified. You are qualified. He's the God. Do you all know what El Shaddai means? God of more than enough. He's El Shaddai. I heard a preacher say this one time, sort of tongue-in-cheek. He said he's not El Chipo. He's El Shaddai. Come on, somebody. Yeah, but true. True, he's El Shaddai. God of more than enough. Come on, somebody. And when the Holy Spirit's in you, you have more than enough for everything He's called you to do. Watch this. When you pray in the Spirit, now here's where we're turning. Get ready. Your faith increases and supernatural peace will manifest. When you don't know what, if you've not been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you don't want to miss next Sunday, but you can do it today. You can do it before you go. But we're going to believe people baptized. Praying in the Spirit is a foreign language to the enemy. He has no idea. Just like when you're in a restaurant and you hear a German guy talk to somebody you don't know, some of you don't know any Spanish, you hear him talk, you have no idea what they're saying. Okay? Well, when you start praying in the Holy Ghost, you're up there, you're praying. Guess what? Satan gets confused. And you may not know, because Paul said, when I pray, I pray mindful, and sometimes I pray unfruitful. Meaning, I don't know what I'm when I'm praying in the Spirit. Sometimes I sing in the natural, sometimes I sing in the Spirit. One of it he understands, the other one he's just singing and letting it go unto God. That's in the Word. I'm a Pentecostal preacher, we're a Pentecostal church that believes in the power of prayer and in God. Amen? 
You can ask my wife, when there's times I don't know what to do, I I get up sometimes and the Lord will say, I want you to pray for 10 minutes in the Spirit. What for? Don't ask me, just do it. Okay. I said, I ain't nothing wrong today, but okay. So I'll go around the house, I'll get the vacuum out, and then when I get done, sometimes when you pray in the Spirit, you look in five minutes, I felt like I prayed 20 already. You ever been there? I have. Don't act like you're so spiritual you can pray three hours in the Spirit. Come on. Sometimes you're like, man, all of a sudden you start going. But the more you do it, you know what he says Why you do that, Jade? He says, because you're building yourself up in your most holy faith. We're going to get to that. It says in Jude. That's what it says. You're praying. There are times, I don't know how many times, Connie, Kent, Paula, I don't know how many times that praying in the Spirit has probably protected me from an auto accident. Maybe a burglar coming in my house that I didn't know about. I don't know. I don't know. You don't know how many times that that's happened. I have no idea. But when we pray in the Spirit, Jesus said, I go away and I will send you another one. He's the comforter. He will lead you into all truth. Listen, I thank God for what He has done. I've been through a lot of stuff in my life, but I thank God that when I pray in the Spirit, He shows up and manifests. Can we get an amen? When I begin to pray in the the Holy Spirit, something happens inside, and, and there are times that I'll get peace and say, okay, thank you, Lord. I've had people in the church get mad at me. I've had pastors leave and try to do their own church. I had a pastor one time start his own home fellowship and we were at Sug Middle School never forgot we got up one morning and Mike comes in a guy named Mike's a pastor John's out so what's he doing he's out passing flyers to his home his home uh, uh, fellowship said, what he said oh, don't worry I took care of it I said what? what do you mean you took care of it I said get out of here if God called you don't need to go out in front of somebody else to, oh by the way here 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 that's a bad spirit so what did I do pray for him father I just thank you thank you for all he's done when I see him I give him a hug I just say, hey, what's happening? I don't worry about it because God will be the judge of that. Can I get an amen? And what does the Bible say? If it's not from God, it won't work anyways. And if it is from God, you can't do nothing to stop it. Just let God take care of it. There are so many things we get our mind off because the enemy wants us to. Just live your life for Jesus. Do the best you can. If you make a mistake, get up. Ask Him to forgive you. Keep going forward. Keep reading the Word. If life has fallen down around you and you're in a valley, you keep looking up to the One who can pull you up out of the valley from where you are. He already brought me out of a miry clay and He ain't going to let me sit. He's the potter. I'm the clay. Let Him do what He wants with me. Can I get an amen? And God will be with you. Let Him build you. Be rejoiced that you are who you are. You're the only one of you. Well, I can't do what he does. So what? He can't do what you do. Right? (laughs) Right? Look at Jude chapter 1, verse 20. But you, beloved, he's talking to us. Beloved, Christian, beloved. You, beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the... Everybody say it together. That means tongues. That's exactly what that means. No Greek, Hebrew, you look it all up. Tongues. Prayer line. Worry less and pray more in the Holy Spirit. Let Him fill you up and you'll become more bolder. And when you're filled with the Spirit, you will not crave the culture, what it says. You can do what you want. Okay. I'm probably going to get in trouble. (laughs) I'm going to do it anyway. I got word yesterday. That a well-known Christian school had a party after graduation, brought alcohol, and let them all drink until they were drunk. At a mama's house. Well, they're going to do it anyway. She bought the alcohol and let them all drink until they were drunk. After they graduated. I was told yesterday. How many know that's wrong? Raise your hand if you think that's wrong. Quit saying, give them condoms because they're going to have sex anyway. Stop doing that. Give them needles because they're going to shoot heroin anyway. Well, they're going to graduate. Everybody's going to do it. Give them the alcohol. They're going to do it anyways. Stop it! Stop that. No, they don't have to do it. Sin is a choice. It's, oh, well, it just fell off. No, you chose to do that. Can I tell you, everybody's watching. You might not get drunk all the time if you prayed in the Spirit before you went and got wasted. huh? 
How about those that deal with pornography? Why don't you pray in the Holy Ghost first, saying, I'm struggling, watch, watch. You ain't going to be able to do that, John. Come on. You're thinking about getting angry at someone. Why don't you pray in the Spirit first? Because when you pray in the Holy Ghost, it's a lot harder to do other things that you know you ain't supposed to do. Can I get an amen? Come on, somebody. You get mad at somebody, you want revenge, pray in the Holy Ghost. You know what? Things change. Oh, come on. We need an update of the Spirit of God in us. I'm not craving the culture by looking like the world. I'm going to let people know that there's a Savior that will save us and free us and break us from bondage. Can we get an amen? This is your day, church, to stand up against this depraved culture that says living the way you want to live is okay. We can do this. I can, I can drink, smoke, do my pot, live with my girlfriend, live with my boyfriend. It's okay. Listen, no, it ain't. No, it ain't. It's not okay. If it was okay, he would say all adulterers go to heaven. All fornicators go to heaven. He'd say it. He said, no. He said, those that do these things, Galatians 5, will not enter the kingdom of God. If we don't ever hear any more of that. I'm a Pentecostal preacher with a Pentecostal message. Come on. Go ahead. It's what I was, it wasn't what I was raised in, but it's what when I got, went to a Pentecostal church at Church of the Cross, and I remember Alan Brett said, receive the Holy Spirit, and I'll never forget it. And several days later, I had a Leon Patillo album, The Sky is the Limit, man. He was a keyboard player for Santana that got filled with the Holy Ghost, left the band, made his own Christian album, and while I was singing it, the Spirit of God hit me, and it just flowed like you wouldn't believe. Listen, it's not going to be a fire that all of a sudden everybody's going to see you on your head like they did back then. Now, God may do that, but most likely, He'll fall upon it, and you've got to activate your spirit. Some people think God's going to grab your tongue and go, la, 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 la. He doesn't do that. I'm not trying to be funny, but he doesn't do that. He doesn't go here. He got it. No. Sometimes when it pops in there and you hear something, yeah, he about your close shoulder. Yeah, da da da. Just start doing. It. Oh, that's you. Well, that's the same devil that told you when you got saved. You really didn't get saved. That's you. He'll tell you the same thing. That's just you. Yeah. Well, then that's me. I'm gonna keep doing it. Then come on, somebody. You know why? Because the more you submit to God and resist what He's telling you, He will go down the road and bother somebody else. Just like when you got saved, you didn't get saved. Look, you're doing the same thing you did three days ago. I am saved. I may be struggling in that area, but God's going to get me through. Get me behind me, Satan. You're defeated in Jesus' name. I plead the blood. You know I'm the only person right now between you and chicken. Come on, somebody. Long as I stay up here, you didn't get that chicken. I'm the only, I'm, all that potato salad you're thinking about, oh, you got to wait till I'm done. <laughs> what does it mean when he's about done? Absolutely nothing! <laughs> we need the power of God to stand in this hour. The more we pray in the Spirit regularly and earnestly, no more praying in the Spirit to the people that have been baptized. Oh, and if you haven't been baptized, you don't have your prayer. You're no less than us. We're all equal, okay? It's just an endunimous power. You are born again when you receive Jesus. That's all. Some people think, well, I don't pray. Then pray in the natural. Don't worry and ask God. And how do you know you ain't driving down the road four months from now and all of a sudden something's on you and you say, I'm going to try it. And then it just starts flowing. And you go, Yeah! All right, I got it. The minute you got it, you're going to go into 7-Eleven, get you something to drink, man, you get back in the truck. That ain't you. That was you. That's just you. That ain't God. Oh, get thee behind me. Say, just keep doing what you just did. It's hard to sin after praying in the Holy Spirit because holy means pure, blameless, and consecrated. If we pray more in the Holy Spirit, we become more like Jesus. There'd be, more, there'd be less broken marriages, less trouble in the house if people would pray in the Spirit more. You can't, live, you can't live for Jesus on Sunday and then live like the devil the rest of the week. Remember what we talked about last Sunday? A lot of fans for Jesus, but other followers. You can't be a fan of Jesus. You need to be a follower. A fan shows up Sunday and that's it. A follower says, hey, I, Monday, I love you, Lord. I thank you. I got up. Praise the Lord. A follower means he's following. Amen? Wickedness is increasing. We just saw that. Don't think it. It's, it's, it's getting worse. 
We need the power of God. Father, we need your power back in the house. When you pray in the Spirit, you can build yourself up in the holy faith. So when you're prayed up, when somebody calls you up to do something, you can sit there, hey, can you come out with me, man? We're going to go to the bar, we're going to hang out. Yeah, we're going to get away. Come on, man, come over here. Yeah, and you know what? You can sit there and say to that person, I'm going to pray in the Spirit. What? And to you, I say, bye-bye. No, I'm not going. I'm not going. I'm changing. When that guy says, come live with me, sweetie. I love you. You know, we're amazed. How far are they going to go? Naked and afraid. Married at first sight. They have a new one. <laughs> Naked in the jungle. Is it called Naked in the jungle? Well, I said, what is that? And that's okay. Uh, and, and on the History Channel, two people that they put in the jungle, and they, oh, and they can't talk to each other either. I'm like, they have to do animal things to each other to communicate. How far are we going to go? First of all, can I ask somebody? Can I ask it? When they put that out there, who says, that's me, that's me, come on, man. <laughs> How far are we going to go? Going to the temptation island. Meet your ex and see if you can still be together five years later while you're still with this person you're engaged to. How far are they going to go? It just gets worse and worse and worse. And you can see it because I'm dating myself. When I was raised, it was Gilligan's Island, we had Fred Flintstone, the, uh, Happy Days, remember Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley. Remember some of the ones that we had? That was it. You didn't have, now today it's blah, 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 blah. Huh? The dating game, the dating game. Remember that? Newlyweds. Yeah, but you have perverted ones now. Everything's. I'm going to preach the truth. Listen, God let me know a long time ago that I'm not here to impress you. I hope to empower you. I've not been called to impress. I've been called to empower. In other words, teach them the Word. And I'm not really a, a super great teacher. I'm more of a preacher. Teaching's neat. I'm more of a like you get Zane up here, he breaks it down, and that's his gifting. Me, I get up here and, blah, blah, you know, but it mixes well, so we grow in Christ. That's why there's a five-fold ministry, that we can grow. You pray in the Spirit, you'll get built up. When you pray in the Holy Spirit, you are building your future also. You're doing an upload. Your phone will tell you it's time to upload. Push the button if you want to do it tonight. If not, push not now. Not now. Not now. And it will keep telling you, do you want to upload? Not now. Not now. Once you do it, all of a sudden the phone, my phone shuts off. The little Apple emblem comes up and there's a little line that goes, and sometimes it takes two or three hours to do it. Do you want to do it at night? But it won't do anything until I push the button. And until you say, God, I want all that you have for me, He's going to keep saying, you want it now? You want it now? You want it now? No. Okay, do it. Boom. And He'll upload and it may take some time, but you're going to get a peace and a joy like you never had when all of a sudden He's baptizing you in the Spirit and your life will begin to change when He uploads you. Come on, somebody. Can I have the worship team go forward? Build up means to rear up. Come on, somebody. You are rising up against the evil one. 1 Corinthians 14.2 says, For he who speaks in tongues does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. That's in the Word. God wants us to get our prayer language. You start praying in the Spirit, you know what you'll start seeing? Family restored. You know I mean, really pushing in. You'll see your life re regenerate. You'll feel something. The upgrade gives you power when you pray in the Spirit. Why do I need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? Why do I need that? Before this update in the upper room, men prayed to God. After the update of Pentecost, God prays through men. Come on, somebody. Let me read that again. I want you to follow this. When did the upgrade happen? 
in the upper room. These men were saved. All right? Now, do you want to know what the Word tells us that we've missed? Where were the other 380? It says 500 men were there when he, when he left. To go, what are you men standing here watching for? The, the apostles, and they said there were 500. But then when he said, go tarry, only 120 tarried up there. Where were the other 380? I always, see, I think outside the box. Why weren't there 500 in that upper room? Now, let me tell you about the upper room. Now, watch. When that happened, there was an upgrade. And they begin to speak in their, their language. Because on the Tower of Babel, when God sent down to divide them, what happened? They all spoke and they couldn't understand each other because he didn't want them. So, so they could build a tower so high up, they thought they could go ahead and fight against God. Read it in the Old Testament. So then God decides to restore everything through the baptism of the Holy Spirit because it said then they were all speaking in their normal language. They, they were amazed. Hey, and they could go to their other countries that some of them came from that might have spoke Greek or Hebrew. Let's just put it this way. Spanish, Russian, whatever. And they were able to speak their foreign language. They didn't even have the dog. God gave it to them. But watch what happens. Before this update in the upper room, men prayed to God. We always should pray to God. But watch this. But on the update, on the Pentecost, God prays to them. I don't know what I'm praying unto the Lord. God is moving through that. He's listening. See, now when I do that up here, God still listens. I'm just, I, can, I pray whenever. Pray it. Sometimes I force myself. Well, you just don't know. I'm doing it because God told me to. I can pray right now. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. And we're all going, oh, amen, amen. Why can't I pray in the Spirit when I'm walking? I can. I don't limit God anymore. I used to. I used to think there were ways you had to do anything. I realized, God, I can pray in the Spirit in the shower. I can pray in the Spirit when I'm getting dressed. I can pray in the Spirit when I'm driving to a restaurant. I can pray in the Spirit when I'm setting up. I can pray in the Spirit when we're cutting the grass. I can pray in the Spirit when I'm out at the beach, walking along the beach line with my wife. I can do pray anywhere I want in the Spirit. There's no limitation to God. When I was sitting in that tube, and they were x-raying to see if I had cancer on my kidney. I didn't want to go in that tube. They make me go every so often, check and grow. I hadn't grown, I hadn't done anything. God told me, I, I shared it with some of you, some of you don't may remember. I was laying there and she was getting ready to shoot the dye through me. And I said, God, I need you. And I heard his voice, crystal clear in my spirit, my son, I have an angel laying on top of you. Don't worry. Nothing will affect you. Because I've been in that tube a lot of times. I started crying. Then the lady pulled me out. And I, I remember I remember specifically Tammy asking, Lady, okay, so when does the die go in? She goes, we just did it. I said, well, I thought I was supposed to feel flesh. She said, did you feel anything? I said, I felt nothing. I didn't even know she did it. So then she runs after me, and I still wonder this day. She comes out, Mr. Rory, can I ask you a question? Who told you that you had to come in here for cancer? I said, Dr. Patel. Okay, he'll probably give you the report. Okay. Why would she even do that? Who told you? <clears throat> Romans eight twenty six says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness. When we do not know what we should pray as we ought to, but the Holy Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. You remember David Marsh Studer, right? I'll never forget, I was in a meeting at uh, Marsha and... Uh, what's it, uh, 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 I can't think of the name, last name right off. We run into the husband at Publix all the time. Uh, Johnson. Marsha Johnson, or what's her husband's name? Yeah. Dennis, that's it, Dennis. We're at Dennis's house, and there's probably about 20 or 25 of us sitting in a circle. And everybody gets quiet, and all of a sudden, Marsha, God rest her soul, she's with Jesus. All of a sudden, she starts this. I had never experienced it in my life. Oh! Oh! She starts crying and moaning. She's moaning. There's 25 of us in a circle. And my, you know, I'm trying to be, you know, you ever did that religion? You know, I'm not ashamed. I still do that every now and then. All right. So I look over there and I'm watching her 
and she's starting to double over. And then she reaches back, and these holy, it's, it's, I like to say that these tears are running out, and she's moaning, and she goes back down again. And all I know is I felt a heat hit that room. And we all started just lifting our hands. You remember that? And crying. We're weeping. Weeping. And all she's doing is going, oh. And it brought me to this scripture. When you don't know what to pray, sometimes with groanings that cannot be uttered with words, the Spirit of God will do for you. I'll tell you what. Shook me up, but changed me, upgraded, upgraded. Have I ever done that? No. But it doesn't mean I'm unqualified. I'm qualified because of who he is. I'm going to bypass this one part. I want to let you know, no weapon formed against you prospered, but i like you to... I, I, I'm going to not read the whole Ephesians, Brandon, chapter 6. I have 10 through 18. I don't want to go. I wonder if you can get down to verse 17. Can you, I mean, when it's in here, let's see. It should be the next one up, Ephesians 6, 10. And go, go on. Okay. And there's a the helmet of salvation, a sword of spirit, which is the word of God. Go there. Praying always. Look at this. Now, he talked about having the armor of God on. Did he not? Did he not? No weapon formed against you prosper. He's not to cheat of faith at all. But look what he ends with. Praying always with all prayers and supplications in the Spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. What did he just say? When you're praying in the Spirit, hold on with perseverance. You've got the armor on. You've got the sword of the Spirit. What's the sword of the Spirit? It's in your lap. It's this, the Word of God. It's the sword of the Spirit. It's what we need. It's what we speak. What did Jesus do? It is written. It is written. It is written. He told the enemy. What happened? Three times. The enemy had to pick up and leave. And it says angels came and ministered to him. Isn't that what the Word tells us? We hear those things. We think that's great. But that's the way God works for you and I. Do you know that their angels are watching over you? Come on, somebody. Do you know that they love you? Come on, somebody. They protect you. When God says, hey, come here. What? You three over here? See Brian over there? Yeah, he's going to break the law by overspeeding because he's goofy a little bit today. Can you put angels around watching, watch make him slow down a little bit? Make something happen. Oh, make the traffic a little bit slower so he gets frustrated. But listen, that'll save his life because there's a wreck about to happen and he's about to go. Go get him. Now, y'all might think that's crazy, but I believe he does that. <coughs> He'll bring angels to help you. So next time you have a lot of traffic and you're in a hurry, okay, God, nothing I can do about it. So there must be a reason, because I prayed for you to protect me this morning. I'm on the interstate. There's an accident. It's a two-hour layup. I can go around this way. I may have to go a different way. Okay, Lord, i got to do it, because I prayed this morning. Angels watch over me, so I'm believing that you've orchestrated my life. Come on. <laughs> See, if we do a different perspective, it makes God in control of everything. Next week, this Pentecostal preacher... We're going to lay hands on anybody for whatever they need. Come on. They need healing. We're going to believe for healing. See, the Holy Spirit fixes our prayer life because He prays only the mind and will of God. Now look at that. Talk, Paul talked about worshiping God in the Spirit. Let God rise up inside of you. <clears throat> On Memorial Day, and I end with this. There are a lot of men and women. I don't know if I'm going out of frame, but it's okay. That represented this. And stood for it. That I don't have people resting me because I preach the gospel. Oh no, you're only going to get this much food for your family. You're allowed one car. We're going to tell you what to do. All right. A lot of people died for our country on Memorial Day to give us freedom. But 2 Corinthians 3.17 tells us there was one who came where the Spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom. I'm no longer a bond slave to sin. 
I became a bond slave to righteousness because of what he did. How about you? Come on, somebody. You a bond slave to that. So when you think you can't do it, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. He no longer just comes on us, but He comes through us with rivers of living water. Could you stand to your feet? Those of you that are watching as we get ready to leave, if you don't know Jesus, I pray you just pray this prayer. We'd love for you to become part of the family of God. And it doesn't matter what church, you just get in a Bible-believing church. And God will, God will help you grow, okay? So here's, here's what I want you to pray. It's a prayer. All of us in this room prayed this prayer at one time in our life. And, it, and we became what the Bible says, born again in John 3.16. So just pray this prayer. Say, to God in heaven, I'm sorry for all my sins. Jesus, come into my life. I believe you died on the cross for all my sins. I believe you rose from the dead and you're seated at the right hand of the Father. And I receive you as my Savior and now I make you my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Wow. You say, that's it? Yeah, because you know what? It's not the work I did. It's the work He already paid on the cross. It's a free gift. <laughs> Think about that. A free gift. Well, I still struggle with this. Don't worry about that. That free gift now lives in you, will now give you the strength to overcome the things you thought you could. And you don't want to miss next week because we're going to talk about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And I believe there's people going to get that all across America, those that are watching, I believe the Lord will do that. Until next time, God bless you.